In this video, we will practice working with rates of change in linear and quadratic functions. Guys, I really broke it down in the previous video. So if you have not seen that yet, you should definitely watch that first. You can either click the link that appears in the upper right hand corner or find the link in the description. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.3. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Selected values for several functions are given in the tables below. For each table of values, determine if the function could be linear, quadratic, or neither. In the previous video, we learned that if a function is linear, the average rate of change is constant. And if a function is quadratic, the rate of change of the rate of change is constant. In other words, the rate of change changes at a constant rate. That last statement is only true over consecutive equal length input value intervals. So I need you to get really comfortable with that phrasing because every time you do a justification, I need you to say over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number one, these are the changes in the output values and these are the changes in the input values. Notice that we have consecutive equal length input value intervals. The average rate of change for each interval is negative 3 over 2, 1 over 2, 5 over 2, and 9 over 2. Because the rate of change is not constant, we know that the function is not linear. Let's see how the rate of change is changing each time. From negative 3 to 1, the numerator is increasing by 4. So that means the rate of change is increasing by 4 over 2, which of course is equal to 2. From 1 to 5, that's another increase of 4. So again, that's 4 over 2, which is equal to 2. From 5 to 9, same story. 4 over 2, which is equal to 2. So we are seeing that the average rate of change is increasing at a constant rate. That means that f of x is quadratic. When you have consecutive equal length input value intervals, you don't have to show all this work to find that the rate of change of the rate of change is constant. You can do a shortcut. We can get all the information we need from the output values. We can see that the rate of change is increasing at a constant rate without actually calculating the rate of change. If asked to justify our answer, we would say that f of x could be quadratic because the average rate of change is increasing at a constant rate over consecutive equal length input value intervals. Notice that saying the average rate of change is increasing at a constant rate is another way of saying the rate of change of the rate of change is constant. For number two, here are the output value changes and here are the input value changes. Notice that we do not have consecutive equal length input value intervals. For this reason, we need to calculate the actual average rate of change by dividing 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 2 over 4, and 2 over 8. Since the average rate of change is not constant, we know that g of x is not linear. Since the rate of change is not changing at a constant rate, we know that g of x is not quadratic. We can say that g of x is not linear because the average rate of change is not constant. And g of x is not quadratic either because the average rate of change is not changing at a constant rate. For number three, here are the output value changes and the input value changes. Since we do not have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we need to actually calculate the average rate of change. 4 over 2 is 2, 2 over 1 is 2, 10 over 5 is 2, and 2 over 1 is 2. If asked to justify, we would say that h of x is linear because the average rate of change is constant. Notice that for linear, we do not need equal length input value intervals. That's just for quadratic. For number four, here are the output value changes 
and here are the input value changes. Since we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we do not need to actually calculate the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is not constant. And we do not need to calculate the rate of change of the rate of change to see that the rate of change is not increasing at a constant rate. So it's back to this answer. K of X is not linear because the average rate of change is not constant. K of X is not quadratic either because the average rate of change is not changing at a constant rate. For number five, here are the output value changes and here are the input value changes. Since we do have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to actually show the calculation of the average rate of change. We can see that the average rate of change is constant. We can say that m of x is linear because the average rate of change is constant. For number six, here are the changes in the output values and here are the changes in the input values. Since we once again have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't actually have to show the calculation of the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is not constant. And we don't have to calculate the rate of change of the rate of change to see that the average rate of change is decreasing at a constant rate. We can say that P of X could be quadratic because the average rate of change is decreasing at a constant rate over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For a quadratic, you have to say that statement. Looking back at two of my previous answers, I should have said could be linear here instead of just saying it is linear. Technically, these functions could do something crazy in between the values that we are given. Selected values for several functions are given in the tables below. For each table of values, determine if the function could be concave up, concave down, or neither. Here's another chart that I've showed you in previous videos. Pause the video and memorize this if you have not done so already. For these problems, focus on this part of the chart. f of x will be concave up wherever the rate of change is increasing, and f of x will be concave down wherever the rate of change is decreasing. For number seven, these are the output value changes, and these are the input value changes. Because we do have consecutive equal length input value intervals, we don't have to actually calculate the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is decreasing. We know that Q of X could be concave down because the average rate of change is decreasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. For number eight, these are the output value changes and these are the input value changes. Again, we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, so we don't need to actually calculate the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is constant. S of t is neither concave up nor concave down because the average rate of change is neither increasing nor decreasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. S of t is most likely linear. For number nine, here are the changes in the input values and here are the changes in the output values. Notice that we once again have consecutive equal length input value intervals. So we don't need to actually calculate the average rate of change to see that the average rate of change is increasing over some intervals, but then decreasing over others. V of C is neither concave up nor concave down because the average rate of change is increasing and then decreasing over consecutive equal length input value intervals. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.